Call in, connect. To speak to Randy, call 561-270-3844. 561-270-3844. There's no uh, secret to the fact that uh, Prigozhin was um, very much a critic of uh, the, the, the military leadership, the uh, Minister of Defense, uh, the, uh, the head of the armed forces. Uh, so how this uh, now unfolds in terms of uh, personnel, uh, all of that, remains to be seen. We are intensely focused on, uh, on Ukraine and Yay. making sure that Ukraine continues to have what it needs to defend itself, to take back the territory that the Russians have seized over the past 16 months. Uh, and we're very uh, focused on maintaining the unity of purpose and action that has been a hallmark of Ukraine's success to date. The president brought together not only the National Security Cabinet uh, yesterday, uh, but brought together leaders from uh, among our key allies and partners. He instructed the rest of us to, to fan out, to engage all of our allies and partners, to make sure we were closely uh, coordinating and keeping the focus where it needs to be, on Ukraine, on the efforts that they're making to take back the territory that Russia's taken from them. I understand that. But just uh, staying on Vladimir Putin for, uh, for a minute, do you believe that this is the beginning of the end for Vladimir Putin? I don't want to speculate about that. Uh, this hmm. is, first of all... <laughs> an internal matter for Russia. What See? we've seen is this, though. Um, we've seen this aggression against Ukraine uh, become a strategic failure across the board. Russia is weaker economically, militarily. It's standing around the world has plummeted. It's managed to get Europeans off of Russian energy. It's managed <laughs> to unite uh, and strengthen NATO with, with new members and a stronger <laughs> alliance. It's managed to uh, alienate uh, from Russia and unite together Ukraine in ways that it, it's never been before. Mm -hmm. This is just an added uh, chapter to a very, very bad book that uh, Putin has written for Russia. Uh, but what's so uh, striking about it is it's internal. The fact that you mm -hmm. have from within uh, someone directly questioning Putin's authority, directly questioning the premises that uh, upon which he launched this aggression yep. uh, against Ukraine, mm -hmm. that in and of itself is um, something very, uh, very powerful. It adds cracks. Um, where those go, when they get there, too soon to say, uh, but it clearly raises new questions that Putin has to deal with. So the thing that really is upsetting to Putin is the exposing of the lie about the invasion of Ukraine being necessary that he told the Russian people, and of course, Fox News told you <laughs> that it was necessary to denazify Ukraine. And people literally went Nazi hunting. They literally went to look for Nazis in Ukraine uh, here in the United States, trolls on, on the freaking Twitters and the rumbles. and the, it, it was so sick and sad, and I'm just so glad that there's been a pin put in that lie, uh, that that is why Vladimir Putin had to, had to attack children and maternity hospitals and apartment blocks and, uh, you know, schools and kindergartens. Yeah, that's why. I mean, it's such garbage. I was so incensed by that particular lie. But then, uh, you know, he also said, oh, well, it was NATO. And Sean Hannity was telling you, well, you know, you can't have NATO on your doorstep. What? Why not? They're for peace. That's what they are. They're peacekeepers. And they just say all for one and one for all. That's it. Little tiny countries who say you attack one of us, you attack all of us because there's power in numbers. OK, that's bad. Dangerous. Scary. Horrible. The man has nuclear weapons. And not only does he have, you know, ballistic, he's got tactical nukes, which he's just moved to Belarus. And isn't it interesting that Prigozhin says he's, given, you know, been given safe passage to Belarus, which is basically a client state of Vladimir Putin's. You know, it, it, here's the thing. It, it, Prigozhin, listen to me now. Listen. If you want to be safe, if you want to be secure... If you want protection, I can give it to you. I can. You know how? You're under indictment in the United States of America ever since the Mueller report identified you, fingered you as being a Russian troll farm operator and that you interfered in the 2016 election. It would go a long way if you surrendered yourself, told the true story that you did interfere in the 2016 election on behalf of Donald J. Trump because Russia preferred Donald J. Trump over Hillary Clinton. And if you surrendered yourself, okay, because you're under indictment, we will keep you safe in a nice supermax prison where Vladimir Putin can't get to you. I can guarantee your safety. 
there. Problem solved. But, uh, yeah, no, seriously, the, the, these guys, they're all bad. They're all, like, ridiculous. And the only reason why Prigozhin is doing what he's doing, which is, you know, uh, attempting to call out Shogu and uh, Gerasimov and, the, you know, the whole military-industrial uh, complex in, uh, in Russia, is because he doesn't want to give up his private mercenary firm. And that's why, apparently, he agreed to go to Belarus. He said he agreed to go to Be- Belarus because, not because he felt safe there or because he didn't think Putin could get to him. He was, he's saying today, I, I didn't I, I didn't even want to, you know, go after Putin. That's not my goal. My goal was to keep my guys my guys. And as you can see, Putin's military guys like me, they like me better than they like Shoigu. They like me better than they like Putin. They like me better than they like Garamazov. So why don't you let me be in charge of them and get rid of Shoigu? The gen- right? This, this is what his pitch is, okay? And so he started marching toward Moscow. And then he realized somewhere along the highway there, you know, some uh, Brett noticed that in one of the towns, Veron- Veronesh, Veronesh, uh, a um, oil depot suddenly, whoo, it's on fire, <laughs> just exploded. Now, that is a war tactic. It happens all the time, uh, you know, and it has been happening in the Ukrainian uh, conflict. Uh, Oil depots have been set ablaze, as you know, steel factories, uh, you know, uh, uh, nuclear facilities, the largest, uh, you know, uh, electric generating nuclear facility came under attack, Zaporizhia. Everybody understands uh, that this would be in bounds for, for bastards like this, for war criminals like this. Uh, but he noticed that in Vornesh, uh, there was a, um, explosion of an oil depot and then they went like one more town and then said all right we get that there's going to be a lot of bloodshed you know it's going to be really freaking ugly so maybe uh, the message was received and so uh now putin and uh, progosian are making deals i mean if i were progosian i'd have i'd keep my food taster real close and i wouldn't be touching any doorknobs in any country I mean, Putin obviously can get you, uh, he can get the scripples, you know, can get his little daughter on a, on a freaking, you know, door latch in, in the UK. So the only safe place for him, for Prigozhin, is, is my solution. It's in the Supermax prison in, like, Colorado, um, in solitary confinement where no one can get to him after he tells the truth about the troll farm and the Russian interference in the 2016 election. I mean, it's a beautiful solution. It's elegant. It uh, serves justice. It's the right thing to do. But that's probably why it will never be that way, (laughs) because it is the right thing to do. But anyway, you'll hear this over and over again. Well, we're not getting involved in this because, you know, our focus is helping Ukraine defend itself and take back its territory that was so wrongly taken from them in a very brutal uh, war criminal, uh, war crime full effort. I don't even know what to call it anymore. Uh, And so we're going to focus on Ukraine. For Russia, this is an internal matter. This has nothing to do with us. Again, it's, 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 you know, (laughs) it has nothing to do with us. Don't have time to listen to the live show? Want to hear more on your schedule? Go to randyroads.com and buy a stinking podcast.